Welcome back guys, JC here, and today I'll be talking about how to wire your MEM OSD Micro into your flight controller and set it up in Betaflight or CleanFlight. Now, uh, this is a very simple thing to do, but there are tons of things that can go wrong, so I'm going to give you all of my advice and fixes of what could possibly be your problem if it's not working. So I advise you to don't skip through this video, watch the entire thing. Also, if you are just now joining us and you did not watch the last video where we flash firmware to the MinimoSD Micro, you have to watch that video first. You can't just buy this and wire it in and because it's not going to work. So look in the description below for my MinimoSD Micro playlist and you will find uh, that video as well as many others. So first let's talk about the pinout of the on-screen display. In the last video, we used six pins from this CP2102 breakout board or serial converter to flash the firmware. But when you wire it into your flight controller, you only need the four middle pins on the top, as well as the video in and video out. So we will be using this ground here, five volt, receive and transmit. I'm going to come back to the ground in just a second, but uh, well, first, locate a UART port on your flight controller. If you don't have any extra UART ports, they are already being taken by other devices, then you can place it on a soft serial port. Now, I'm not covering that in this video. That will actually be a separate video. Uh, once again, look in that uh, playlist, but I will not be covering everything in that video like I am doing in this video. So either way, watch this entire video. I have decided to use UART number 2 on this specific flight controller for this demonstration. You will know it's a UART port when you see a RX and TX, which is receive and transmit. Like I said, coming back to ground, let's go to 5 volt. You can run this wire to any 5 volt pin on your flight controller. Uh, just for example, this flight controller has a dedicated 5 volt pin here, but any of these middle output pins they are all 5 volt pins so you can use any of these next is the RX or receive this actually has to go to a transmit on the UART port because uh, what this means is the data will be transmitted out and it will be received by the on-screen display so this RX is going to my UART 2 TX which is right here then it's vice versa for the next pin which is the last pin TX because it's a transmit it has to go to a receive which is right here U2 RX now for the ground a lot of flight controllers will have four pins in a row uh, just for example on this one here we have ground 5 volt transmit and receive so that's the four wires that we need but when it comes to grounds what I will recommend is Sometimes it does work and you're, you will see your on-screen display, but other times it doesn't. Uh, in that case, it's because you don't have a common ground. What is a common ground? Well, basically, your PDB is a common ground. What that means is if you place all of your grounds on a PDB, uh, it's almost guaranteed to work. And you will see many of my grounds that I've run to any negative pad on the PDB. So once again, you can run this ground from the OSD to your flight controller, but if your, your on-screen display is not working, that's the first thing that I would do, is place this ground on the PDB instead. Now if we look back at the diagram, we have video in and video out, as well as two more grounds. You will notice that I am not using any grounds. Uh, the video in basically means your video wire from your camera. So I have this yellow wire going from the camera right to video in. And then video out is going to be the video wire going to your video transmitter. So this wire here is running to my video transmitter. Now like I said for the grounds, uh, if your on-screen display is not working then just go ahead and place them all on your PDB. Just for example, my black ground coming from the camera is also wired into the PDB as well as my ground from the video transmitter it is run to the PDB and that's why I have so many ground wires here running to any they don't have to be touching each other they can be on any uh, negative pad it doesn't matter where you place them uh, next tip 
sometimes your on-screen display you can see it but once you start flying there's going to be uh, it's a long explanation but basically uh, once the voltage increases to the ESCs and things like that you will get noise in the system and your on-screen display will go away it's just going to just disappear uh, once again in that case place all grounds on the PDB and that will fix the problem at this point you should have the OSD wired so we've got ground to the PDB 5 volts coming from the flight controller receive and transmit going to a transmit and receive on a UART port and then video in from the camera video out going to video transmitter we're now wired so let's go into beta flight and set everything up or clean flight it doesn't matter you can use either one just keep in mind, remember the last video, if you do want clean flight, you have to turn clean flight on before you flash firmware. If you want beta flight, you have to turn on beta flight and then flash firmware. Uh, so whatever, whichever one you flashed, you have to use that one. If not, then you can go back and reflash it. Okay, so this is very simple. We're just going to go to ports, and because I placed my transmit and receive on UART number 2 I just want to come underneath data and turn on the data for UART 2 and then save and reboot and that's it my next tip is this flight controller I'm using now we don't see the USB VCP up here this means that this is a CP2102 uh, it uses the CP2102 driver in that case I would highly advise not placing your on-screen display on UART 1 because uh, this is shared with the USB, so UART 1 is what your computer is using to talk to the flight controller. If you have your on-screen display on UART 1 and you plug in a USB, then the on-screen display and your computer both are talking to the flight controller at the same time. That's going to cause things to lock up, uh, your settings won't save, a bunch of crazy stuff is going to happen. Now if you have a flight controller with a virtual COM port, you can place it on UART 1 because the USB is, isn't shared with any of the UARTs. My final tip is if you are completely out of UARTs, you've placed uh, devices on all of your UARTs and you have none remaining, then look in the description below at the playlist and you will find a video on how to add in an on-screen display to a soft serial port. Uh, but hopefully you still watch this entire video, that's why I'm just now mentioning this towards the end. Uh, because I'm not going to explain everything I did in this video in that video as well okay so now let's save and reboot I'm going to disconnect my USB cable now plug in a LiPo battery turn on my video transmitter and there we go now the on-screen display is up and running just a couple more tips if you are seeing video but not your on-screen display then you may have to change what type of camera that your on-screen display is looking for. Uh, just for example, uh, before I shot this video, I didn't get the on-screen display, but I did get video, so I had to go back into the NWOSD GUI like we did in the last video, and it comes preset for NTSC type cameras, but this is a PAL camera. So I had to switch it from NTSC to PAL uh, and then re-upload you know, those settings and then my on-screen display started working. My next tip is you do not have to desolder all these wires or remove all the solders and then reconnect this CP2102 breakout board to go back into the MWOSD GUI. Watch my, uh, watch my serial pass-through video and I show you how to go back into the uh, MWOSD GUI through your flight controller and USB cable. That way you don't have to disconnect anything. And this only works after you flash firmware like we did in the last video. So just for example, I have one of these uh, OSDs in this super tiny micro build and I never have to remove it for anything uh, because I just use a serial pass through. And then once you get your on-screen display working, you can use the uh, transmitter menu. Uh, I'm Basically, you can use your transmitter like a Tyrannus or anything, really, uh, to access the menu in your on-screen display to make changes. Uh, that's all I'm going to explain for now. Just watch that video and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. So I hope I explained it well enough. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.